Hi everyone, welcome to News Dads. I'm Jimmy Young. And I'm Nicole Spiller, now reporting for the Pro Cannabis Media Group and ProCannabisMedia.com. Together, Nicole and I will be sharing some of the biggest stories in the cannabis universe every week moving forward from today. There are two big stories from this past week, one coming from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And the other from right here in the Bay State, Massachusetts. We start in Washington, D.C., where the green wave continues to move forward. For the first time in history, the U.S. House of Representatives passed an amendment that will block the Department of Justice from interfering with state cannabis laws. This policy is attached to a large-scale bill to fund parts of the federal government for the fiscal year 2020. Cannabis advocates are thrilled with this development for two reasons. One is it passed by a vote of 267 to 165 with bipartisan support from both parties. The second is that it covers adult use state programs in addition to the already existing laws protecting medical use. Aaron Smith, the founder and executive director of the NCIA, shared this quote. This was truly a historic vote, and this is the farthest reaching action Congress has ever taken to reform outdated federal marijuana prohibition policies. So I guess you could say that's one small step for Reed and one giant bong hit for mankind. <laughs> LOL. I'm sorry I had to do it. It is the 30th anniversary, after all, of Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon. But seriously, folks, there was another development here in Massachusetts that has the farm, hemp, and CBD community in an uproar. In a policy statement by the State Department of Agricultural Resources, Massachusetts has banned the sale of food products containing CBD until the FDA finishes their public statement period and provides guidelines for its use. Now, the policy does allow for the growing and production of hemp-based oils, seeds, and clothing, but Governor Baker made it clear that they are taking their cues from the federal government and the FDA. At the New England Cannabis Convention this past weekend in Springfield, I talked with some of the small startup businesses who are not too pleased with this policy change. Oh, absolutely. There's so much confusion. I mean, the fact that the flowers look pretty similar, scares MDAR, I know that for a fact, and I know it scares a lot of people that don't understand the plant. Now back to Springfield and their first annual New England Cannabis Convention. Hundreds of vendors and thousands of people flocked to the Mass Mutual Center on this beautiful weekend to check out many local vendors and exhibitors from all over the country and in Western Mass. Mark Shepard is a co-founder of NECAN and compared his first co convention five years ago. Uh, we've had a terrific weekend here. Um, met a lot of new people from outside this area. We've come to the show from the market from Vermont, from Eastern uh, New York, from Connecticut. Um, so it's been fantastic. We've had a great turnout. We've got an amazing set of exhibitors and the uh, programming has been some of the heavily, heavily attended programming we've had at any show. Now let's check the Mass State Cannabis Sales Tote Board for the week of June 16th. Adult use sales of cannabis is now up to over $1 million a day from the 20 licensed dispensaries in Massachusetts. The total for the industry since it launched in November 2018 is now at once $163 million in sales of legal cannabis. And finally today, what do you think is the best way to study drug use in a legal modern state? Is it poop or is it pee, Nicole? Well, Jimmy, the answer is both. It's a whole lot of waste, and either way, it's hazardous duty. <laughs> LOL on that one for sure. And you are right. Researchers at the University of Puget Sound in Washington State picked up a grant of $120,000 over the past three years from the substance abuse world to study THC-COOH. That's the metabolized chemical from weed in human urine. Now, wastewater study is used in Europe and Australia to measure drug use in adults, but this is the first time that they've done it here in the U.S. And what do you think the conclusions were, Nicole? Consumption of cannabis has doubled over the three years of the study. What the researchers weren't able to determine is if twice as many people are consuming cannabis in a legal state, or is the cannabis just twice as potent? And you know why? Because... It's a whole new world of weed out there. And for the Pro Cannabis Media Group and ProCannabisMedia.com, I'm Jimmy Young. I'm Nicole Spiller, and we leave you with a few cannabis-friendly events in the greater Boston area over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching News Dads.